Mr. Jameson is a 58-year-old man who presents to the clinic today with his wife. He is here today after being referred for pulmonary function testing and a chest x-ray last week for evaluation of COPD. <laughs> his primary complaint is worsening productive cough and shortness of breath with exertion for the past five years. And he has been a cigarette smoker for the past 35 years at one to two packs per day. Chest x-ray reveals increased radiolucency of the lung fields and a flattened diaphragm. Pulmonary function tests reveal a FEV1 FVC ratio of 70% with a post-bronchodilator FEV1 of 60% predictive value. <laughs> he was prescribed albuterol inhaler for the last week, which he is currently using one to two times a day. He currently takes lisinopril, 20 milligrams per day for hypertension, and he has no drug allergies. Today his vitals are as follows. Blood pressure, 132 over 82. Respiratory rate, 16. Heart rate, 88. BMI, 26. Pulse ox, 95%.
dry mouth, throat irritation, constipation, and urinary retention. Oh my goodness. Yes. That sounds pretty serious. Do I need to go see any other providers? You should actually. I'm going to go ahead and refer you for pulmonary rehabilitation because it's proven to substantially increase respiratory health and can counteract the effects that COPD causes on your heart. Is there anything else we can do? You can. So like I said, your pulmonary rehabilitation is an exercise training program that acts to improve exercise tolerance and symptoms of dyspnea and fatigue. So we're going to refer you there. Also, peer support, including you, Mrs. Jameson, will greatly help this disease. I want you to avoid triggers that can be in your home. Some of these triggers include tobacco <coughs> smoke, fumes, aerosol products, powders, dust and dirt, bacteria, mold and mildew, any household cleaners, bug sprays, fireplace smoke, asbestos, and red radon gas. Another thing you can do is avoid certain types of medications. Um, these medications will exacerbate your symptoms. So you want to stay away from any beta blockers, TCAs, opiates like codeine and oxycodone, first generation antihistamines like azalestine and Benadryl, caffeine, and sympathomimetics like acetophedrin. Over-the-counter cough suppressants are also something you want to stay away from. You said smoking makes it worse? It does. We're going to have to go ahead and have you quit smoking. Um, I want you to stop smoking altogether because at this point in your stage of disease, it's critical. It can reduce the symptoms of cough and sputum production, and most patients will revert back to normal FEV1 values within the first 12 months, which makes it unlikely that you will ever progress to severe COPD as long as you stop smoking. Additionally, it will improve long-term mortality by reducing the risk of both respiratory and cardiovascular causes of death. Now, Mrs. Jameson, is it true that you also smoke? Yes, it is. All right, we're going to have to have you stop, too, because... What? Yes, because the success of your husband's condition will rapidly increase if you both stop smoking at the same time. Quitting together will make this easier on your husband, improve your, he your health as well as his, and your continued smoking will likely cause exacerbations and progress progressions of your husband's COPD. Oh my, it looks like we're both going to have to stop. It would be best for both of you, yes. Some things you can do are chewing Nicorette gum, using Nicoderm, Chantex, Wellbutrin, or Zyband, and we can give you some smoking cessation counseling. Okay, great. So how long will I have this? So that's a really important question. COPD is a chronic disease. It's not going to go away. And the purpose of treatment is to suppress your symptoms, not cure the disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to come see you again? or You do. We're going to have to do some um, follow-up. So routine follow-up visits and close monitoring are essential for um, patients with COPD, like yourself. I'm going to encourage you to regularly schedule appointments, and I'm going to provide you guys with some resources to help with smoking cessation. And I want you to contact the office if you experience any of the side effects that we went over that might hinder your compliance. And I'm going to provide you with some information about what to do when you experience some of, when you experience some of these acute exacerbation symptoms, like returning to the office, calling the office, going to the ER, or calling 911. exacerbation is worsening dyspnea, mm -hmm. increased sputum purulence, or volume of sputum. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, you're going to be more affected by air pollution, upper respiratory infections, mm -hmm. influenza, and any signs or symptoms of cold, you want to go ahead and seek some antibiotic therapy immediately, because that will really help you out in those situations. Um, we're going to avoid mechanical ventilation with you, because um, a lot of patients in your condition um, will not come back off of it once it's started it started. Um, yes. um, there's also a lot of comorbid conditions that are very common with COPD, um, and they will affect symptoms and limitations. They can increase hospital stays, and they can increase the costs of the disease due to the need for medication to treat the conditions. What are those conditions? I'm glad you asked. Some of the most common comorbid conditions um, with COPD are hypertension, hyperlipidemia, arthritis, GERD, depression, cataracts, osteoporosis, sleep apnea, diabetes, angina, um, MI, stroke, glaucoma, uh, congestive heart failure, cancer, and erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll schedule a follow-up.
follow up visit with you very soon. All right, great. So yeah, go ahead on out. You guys are finished here. Um, go schedule an appointment with the front desk. And like I said, you guys both got to stop smoking, okay? We will. Thank right, you, Dr. Great. Take care. All right, I'll see you guys back Thank soon. You. So with this patient presentation, um, we did not need to use the inhaled glucocorticoids because his FEV1 was greater than 50% and he wasn't having an acute exacerbation, so no oral systemic therapy was needed. Um, oxygen therapy is also reserved for when his um, oxygen saturation is under 88%, which it was not. And then um, if it got to the point where FEV1 was less than 25%, we would also recommend um, lung transplantation.